Good morning. Um, uh, this is the 28th of September, 2022. Um, okay, Mom, um, um, Uncle Ed and Auntie Rhoda, <clears throat> I got um, some disturbing news to tell you. Okay, I'm in. Um, I am in the uh, hospital in Edmonton again. The police came for no reason for freedom. They're violating my charter rights. We have the freedom of thought, belief, opinion, and expression, including the freedom of the press and media. My doctor is Dr. Berg. Now, I'm worried that somebody's going to try to murder Dr. Berg. I think Dr. Berg's going to get murdered because you know the people are telepathic, and you know there's a lot of people that, that are around here that are telepathic, and now they're trying to fill out a Form 11 to try to... Uh, to have somebody else be in control of my treatment when I don't need anybody to be in control of my treatment. I have fetal alcohol syndrome. I have paperwork at home, Mom and Heidi, that say fetal alcohol syndrome. Kids don't have boundaries. They're childlike. To get into the kingdom of heaven, you have to be childlike. Now, I also have a video that's called Psychiatry's Deadliest Sham. Now, psychiatry is all bullshit. They're using the harps in Alaska and in Belgium, and they're pumping Sarah nerve gas all throughout North America. And they're using the harps to put voices in people's heads. And they're walking telepathic people around here. They've been criminally harassing me in here. Yesterday, there was this two staff members kept walking around and hollering at me all day long yesterday for like three hours in the afternoon. They were hollering at me. They kept saying stuff, yelling about my piano playing and stuff like that. And so I made sure, I said, oh, they're not doing that. So I just to be sure, I went out and they were actually doing that. So not only am I being criminally harassed, I sent you, Heidi, the proof beyond a reasonable doubt that I am not James Ian Warbisky. I am who I claim to be. And I don't, mental illness is a sham. Nobody's going to be taking control of my medical, my medical status. Now, I had a lawyer named Schneider. I had a lawyer named um, Schneider, I forget his name, the, for his first name. Now, we fought them. Now, they have a lifetime ban. They are not allowed to give me needles. They're not allowed to force medication on people. They can't force medi medication on people. Now, when people go around and they think they can kidnap people, there's people out there that murder people like that. There's people that will just go out there and sh shoot Dr. Berg and get away with it. There's people that will do that. They don't, have, they don't fucking care because they'll get away with it. They have 303s with no serial numbers. They're war rifles. They don't care. There's people out there that will kill Dr. Berg. And I'm not even telling anybody to do that. I'm not threatening anybody in any way, shape, or form. But this is what's going to happen to her. So to prevent this from happening, you need to listen to what I'm going to say and you need to phone the police and you need to get them to come here and either arrest her and, and arrest her for kidnapping and failing to provide the proper necessities for life. I do not have schizophrenia. I can get about 5,000 people that will vouch for me. There's people in Alaska that say it's horrible. That harp is horrible. They're using it to put voices in people's heads. I don't hear voices in my head. We have the freedom of thought. I can think the way I think. I have fetal alcohol syndrome. I think the way I am. I have proof that I have fetal alcohol syndrome because I have a VSD and I had strabismus in my eyes and all the stuff that you said, mom, poor sexual boundaries, all of that, you're, you're right. So that, that's a fact. You are right about that. However, that doesn't mean that they can feed me medication. I have this video, Psychiatry's Deadliest Sham. I played it on the unit. Everybody was just shocked and the staff said, oh, you can't play that video anymore because it might cause confusion. It's not causing confusion. It's fucking, they're restricting my right, my freedom of the press and media. I have the freedom to play this video all day long if I want to show everybody here the video. And they can't stop me from doing that. I don't get what she thinks. This whole hospital has locks on all of the doors. That's against the law. Same as I have the freedom to go out for walks. I've got some, some passes, that's right. And I'm not threatening anybody. RV Zundel says, even it appears violent, I can speak. Even including acting, I can act on it. If somebody's guilty, I can have them put to death for kidnapping me. However, if I go out 
and I threaten somebody that is that is innocent and then I go after them and harm them, then it's not protected. But see, she's not innocent. She's guilty. She's guilty, guilty, guilty. They should have let me go this morning. And the first thing, every time I go to see this doctor, what a fucking nutcase. She needs to be certified for her behaviors. She's delusional. She believes that fucking mental, that I have schizophrenia. She doesn't even know how to spell properly. Now, how the hell is she capable of giving me a diagnosis? of uh of FAS or anything she I told her that's all I have is FAS I don't hear voices in my head and stuff I don't hear voices I don't hallucinate everybody in here is normal <laughs> everybody's normal Greg's normal Philippe's normal we're all normal and they're letting all these people go when they're trying to force people to do my treatment and she's going well you're gonna need to appeal your certificates I said I've done that before and I won and they had to let me go. I've done that. Fought them on needle. They can't give me needles ever. They can't force medication on me ever. Now listen to what I'm going to read to you. You're going to not going to believe this, but this is true. Okay, it goes the diagnostic and statistic manual. Psychiatry's deadliest sham. 374 disorders and counting and zero cures. There's more people that commit suicide after they were put on medication than the people that weren't put on medication. So it says, life can be a real adventure, hot, fast, slow or sad, often filled with ups and downs, sometimes very serious. But according to the psychiatrist, any part of life can be labeled a mental illness. In fact, they even say that some of the time in our lives, almost half of us will suffer from one. Where are these disorders all coming from? They're coming from the Psychiatry's Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. It is psychiatry's best-selling catalog of mental illnesses, 943 pages long and covering everything from depression and anxiety to stuttering, cigarette addiction, fear of spiders, nightmares, problems with math, even indoor, a disorder of infancy, all reinterpreted and labeled as a brain disease. All told, there are 374 mental disorders listed in the DSM, uh, DSM slash IV. And, and with a new edition due to come out soon, there will undoubtedly be more, adding millions of dollars in profit for the psych psychiatric and pharmaceutical industry developing the disorders. See, they're developing these disorders, making names up for disorders so they can make money off of people. These categories are not only used to diagnose mental and emotional disturbances and to prescribe treatment, but also to decide custody battles, discrimination cases, provide poor testimony, and voluntarily commit people to psychiatric institutions and involuntarily commit people to psychiatric institutions, which means they involuntarily put me in here and they're kidnapping me. I was at work when they came and got me. Now, like I said, that's right. You know this. And if you don't act and get me out here, then you're guilty and you get, and, and you get put to death too. See, that's, I'm not threatening you. I'm telling you how the law works. Okay. Number six. Today, the DSM, the Diagnostic Statistic Manual, and its counterpart, the Mental and Behavioral Disorders section of the International Classifications of Diseases, the ICD, serve as the last word insanity, insanity and mental illness. But is it science? No, it's not. When prescribed psychiatrists, some of them at the highest levels of psych psychiatric leadership will admit that it's not. So where got psychiatrists even admitting to this? Okay, but throughout the DSM 60 year history, they have gone to Great Lakes to make the public believe that it is. So is a DSM a valid scientific document or is it an elaborate pseudoscientific sham? It's a pseudoscientific sham. It's not a legal in any way, shape or form. Chemical imbalance. Throughout its history, psychiatry has always been considered by the medical community as less than scientific. In fact, it has only been in the last century that psychiatrists have emerged from working in the insane asylums to claim the status of real doctors. To do this, they position themselves as experts on the brain, 
where they claim to have found actual physical causes behind unwanted psychological and emotional stress. The problem there was, and still is, no evidence whatsoever that psychiatry's mental disorders came from any detectable problem in the brain, like a lesion, tumor, or a blood abnormality, nor were there any tests like x-rays, blood tests, and brain scans that can confirm any diagnosis in me. They've already done brain scans. He said, there's nothing wrong with me. Okay, but okay. psychiatrists ignored this lack of evidence and created many theories, the most popular of which became known as the chemical imbalance theory, promoted by psychiatrists and broadly advertised by their partners in the, in the pharmaceutical industry. This theory has attained pop culture status Though there is not one shred of evidence to support it, not one shred of evidence to support that mental illness exists. I'm going to tell you later on how why you get mentally ill. Promoted by psychiatrists and broadly advertised by their partners in this pharmaceutical industry, this theory has attained a lot of culture status, but it's not real. Psychiatrists will even admit that the chemical imbalance theory is nothing more than a drug company marketing spin, yet they continue to promulgate it through the psychiatry and medical field. Shocking, the psychiatrists are, these are psychiatrists that are admitting this. Pretended authority, listen to this. Imagine a medical doctor treating high blood pressure or diabetes who cannot even define what it is. Now consider that not one psychiatrist can define what a mental disorder is. Unbelievable. It's right there in the DSM. Even in their own manual, it's in there. They have no idea how to classify a mental illness. But I'm a doctor. I'm going to tell you in the end. No, it's no definition adequately specifies precise boundaries for the concept of mental disorder. In a recent interview, Omanopa, the editor-in-chief of the newest edition of the Diagnostics and Statistics Manual, Dr. Alan Francis, was even more brunt. There is no definition of a mental disorder. It's bullshit. I mean, you just can't even define it. Dr. Alan Francis, the chairperson for the DSM-IV or DSM-5 task force, so this is their own top doctor of all the psychiatrists saying that psychiatry is a sham. So without the definition for the very concept of mental disorder, how do the psychiatrists decide what diseases to list in the DSM? The answer is through census. They vote them in. They sit around the table and they holler loudly. And whoever hollows, hollers the loudest that's the, the, oh, okay, we'll write that, we'll call that in it, the mental illness. Yeah, the answer is through census, like I said. In fact, the partisan, partisan bickering and political wrangling at the DSM-3 meetings in 1980 was so intense that it moved one psychiatrist to remark. People would shout out their opinions from all sides of the room, and whoever shouted the loudest tended to be heard. That's right, my brother Mark is a psychiatrist. Okay, my, uh, let's see, okay, hold on a sec. My own impression coming straight from England, it was more like a tobacco auction than a sort of conference. Another member of the DSM decision-making pan panel put it this way, the low level of intellectual effort was shocking. Diagnoses were developed by it majority vote on the level we would use to choose a restaurant. That's real. You feel like Italian. I feel like Chinese. So let's go to the cafeteria. Then it's typed into the computer. It may reflect on our naivety, but it was our belief that there would be an attempt to look at things scientifically. Besides not being scientifically in the least, this method is strife with politics and conflict of interest. According to a one widely read study, 56% of the psychiatrists deciding on what disorders to list in the DSM-5 had personal financial ties to the pharmaceutical companies, the very industry that stood to gain from the expansion of the number of diagnosable mental illnesses. 
And though this revelation further stained the reputation of the DSM, psychiatrists appeared unmoved. 68% of psychiatrists in the DSM-5 task force, the highest echelon deciding on the mental disorders to be listed in the next edition of the DSM, reported taking money in some form from the drug companies. They were paying them to list the illnesses, and the drug companies are giving them money so they can make medication. Nevertheless, the DSM, Diagnostic Statistics Manual, is used today to diagnose 120 million people with a mental disorder or even multiple disorders. The days of Sigmund Freud, where a patient reclines on a couch telling his troubles to a note-taking psychiatrist, are long gone. See, the psychiatrists don't ask me what's bothering me. They're, and when I told them this is what's bothering me, nobody's investigated. The police haven't investigated. Then they investigated upstairs where I lived. The people, they, the maintenance even found they were putting chemicals through the water and nobody did anything about it. They haven't evicted them or anything. My whole roof caved in in my bathroom. They're running around up there, dropping 100-pound weights on the floor, banging around all day long and stuff sometimes and then they're just deadly quiet for three days and they start doing all this weird shit i don't know what the hell's wrong with them but i seen their apartment and they should be evicted brenda raptor needs to be certified she's not capable of taking care of herself so is her son jason they should be in here not me but i'm in here because of your people's behaviors remember this okay today only 11 percent of psychiatrists offer talk therapy to all their patients and the number is shrinking this is because they can make much more money conducting a 15-minute med check than they can in an hour of talk therapy. To dig a psychiatrist's diagnosis means a psychiatric drug. See? Naturally, this appeals to the pharmaceutical industry, which has become very interested in the development and the promotion of psychiatric illness. In fact, the psychiatric illness is, pro, in, is even promoted in the media with the same vigor as beer and laundry sold. They're really sick. Although it is a major growth industry, psychiatric diagnosing and drugging is showing no signs of curing anyone. I'm on my phone talking to my parents. Since 1987, when the first modern antidepressant came on the market, the number of the people on government disability for mental illness has gone from 1.25 million to over 4 million today. And though it is a major growth industry, psychiatric diagnosing and drugging is showing no signs of curing anyone. So even it says here, although it is a major growth industry, the psychiatric diagnosing and their drugging the people is showing no signs of caring people. They're actually people are killing themselves that are on these drugs. People are committing suicide. They're making people worse. That's why I don't take any drugs. And although it is, and since 1987, when the first modern antidepressant came on the market, like there's Paxil, Zoloft, and other ones, the number of the people of the on government disability for mental illness has gone from 1.25 million to over 4 million, as I just repeated that, sorry. <laughs> During the same period, there has been a 35-fold increase in the number of children receiving federal mental health disability payments. They're prescribing Ritalin for kids because they're like the, the children when we were young, and they're hyper, so they're giving them Ritalin. That doesn't make them mentally ill. It's all about the money. But psychiatric drugs aren't your average consumer retail item. They come, for, they come with severe side effects such as obesity, liver problems like I have, diabetes, heart irregularity like I have because of the medication I'm on, hypertension, violence, and suicide, as I said. Psychiatric drugs are also well known to cause intense dependency and addiction so-called anti-anxiety medication, for instance, is harder to withdraw from than heroin. And stimulants commonly given to children for attention problems are chemically similar to cocaine, man. They're just like doing cocaine. So they're feeding them, basically they're feeding them cocaine, which is an illegal drug. So how are these drugs legal? On top of this, a far-ranging 
Analysis of published and unpublished studies on four major antidepressants has proven that these drugs work no better than a sugar pill. Uh -huh. And this was done by medical doctors and psychiatrists. Not only does this simple little book called the DSM provide the label psychiatrists put on you, it justifies their drugging you with powerful side effects laden chemical effects with laden chemical agents that don't even work. Did you hear what I just said to you? You're welcome. This is coming directly from me. Psychiatrists admit they don't even know the cause of any mental disorder and do not have any cures. This is the psychiatrists that are admitting this. They're all these doctors, and it's over 80% of them that are admitting this. The answer is they don't. See, therefore, given that psychiatry does not work, and psychiatry drugs cause short and long-term damage far exceeding any perceived benefits, why would anybody pay to see a psychiatrist? The answer is they don't. The fact is very few people are willing to pay exorbitant amounts of money for psychiatric treatment that drags on for years, often a lifetime, even while delivering such paltry results. That leaves insurance to pick up the tab. In recent years, in some countries, the psychiatric pharmaceutical lobby has been very effective in getting laws passed forcing insurance companies to provide mental health insurance equal to regular medical insurance. Economically, this has been catastrophic. Absolutely. Given that a psychiatric patient is often told he has an incurable genetic flaw or chemical imbalance and may need to be on psychiatric drugs for the rest of his life, psychiatric treatment has skyrocketed the average insurance bill costing 200% more than general medical treatment. Insurance executives need to know that there are other far less expensive ways of handling psychological or emotional stress that are safe and permanent, like taking antifungal medication to get rid of the yeast infections, why? Because the government's putting yeast in the water and antibiotics to kill your good bacteria. So you're feeling all anxiety, and when you feel this anxiety, and then they use the harps to put voices in your heads, and then they have telepathic people that run around going, oh, guess what he said this time? We have the freedom of thought, belief, opinion, and expression, including the freedom of the press and the media. You know, Danger Christensen doesn't like me, she had blocked me. Danger Christensen hasn't blocked me, therefore I'm not a problem. That's how I know. Pretty simple math, huh? Okay, listen to this, Heidi. Destroying children. There are no classifications of mental disorder in the Diagnostic and Statistic Manual, growing faster than for those under 18. See, Heidi, children's mental disorders are a growth industry in the DSM, going from three in 1952 to 44 in the DSM's last edition a 1,366% increase. The diagnosis of attention deficit and hyperactivity disorder alone has been used to label 20 million children worldwide, and for no more reason than not sitting still in school, fidgeting or running or climbing excessively, or other normal children behavior. This is normal. To get in the kingdom of heaven, you have to be childlike. See, as ADHD, as being debunked as unscientific, uh, as unscientific, psychiatrists simply switched to diagnosing children with bipolar disorder, causing a 40-fold increase in the prescription of antipsychotic drugs to children in the just nine years. So why are the children getting sick? This is really simple, man. They're, they're not sick, and if they are sick, it's because the government's using the harp to put voices in people's head and putting Sarah nerve gas in the water to agitate the kids so they can make money off of them. And what is that? That's kidnapping. And what does that say? Any man that buys or sells or kidnaps, any person that buys or sells or kidnaps another person shall surely be put to death. This is biblical. This is the law in the law of the Torah, and that's what's going to happen to all these people. Okay. So the DSM now is checklists that the psychiatrist can use to label your children with hyperactivity, bipolar disease, or depression. These checklists have been adapted for use in mental screening campaigns in school where children can be checked for signs of mental disorders, often without a parent's knowledge.
what they're doing now without your knowledge same as they're trying to fill out a form 11 to try to force somebody to, to be my caretaker and my and that's never gonna happen you need to do what I said to you, you gotta phone the police and have Dr. Berg arrested for kidnapping me and for violating my charter rights that's right pilots psychiatry programs to screen children every year from kindergarten to the age 18 for signs of mental illness have already begun in Australia and some of these people are gifted the people are gifted some children can levitate some children can move objects some people can heal people just by touching them and they're saying they're mentally ill you know that's heavenly and once your child gets one of these DSM diagnosis the drugs he or she is put on can cause great damage to their growing brain so it damages their brains it's damaging their brain same as my brain is being damaged by the medication I'm taking but I'm only taking it because they're dead because I know that if I, I quit taking it they're gonna start threatening me and they just doing this anyway they're purposely doing this they had no reason to bring me in here no reason whatsoever and people are hacking my phone mental health phoned me and I never got their calls people are hacking and same as my friend Justin's calling people are calling me and people are hacking in and preventing me from getting my calls so why aren't the police arresting those people hmm there you are man simple so children represent a huge market segment in the psych to the psychiatrics and the drug companies today they are hard at work targeting toddlers and even infants for psychiatric drugging that's right, the psychiatrics most responsible for setting off the worldwide child bipolar epidemic says that bipolar disorder can start from the moment child opens his eyes, which is absolutely bullshit. The next rendition of the DSM will even have more ways to label children exhibiting unwanted behavior with diseases such as internet addiction, binge eating, and disruptive mood to dysregulation disorder otherwise known as temper tantrums but there is one more proposed inclusion that is truly chilling and this one promotes to actually diagnose you or your child with the possibility of a mental illness sometime in the future they're going to diagnose Rowanna with a mental illness and they're going to try to force her to take medication in order to be in psychiatry treatment you know today that's they might even do that how do you know and the risks are enormous psychiatry's biggest proponent of screening for the so-called attenuated psychosis symptoms syndrome formally psychosis risk syndrome even admits the percentage of people wrongly labeled as pre-psychotic will be around 70 percent so this is over 50 percent they're getting this wrong with the people and they're not even psychotic worse odds than flipping a coin the latest trend of claiming to be able to predict if a child is likely to become psychotic, depressed, or experience bipolar disorder and drugging them to prevent them, the onset of the disorder is one of the greatest threats ever to the children. Do not uh, hinder the children from coming to me. I have the right to speak to Greta. I told Greta I love her very much and to keep up with her climate strike. So how does that make me mentally ill? And these people are telepathic. The doctors are telepathic. Probably three quarters of the staff are telepathic. They're running around while they use the harp to put horrible thoughts in people's heads. And then they're saying, oh, you're hearing voices. I don't hear voices. But they do. And that's how they're doing this because they're telepathic and they're not allowed to be telepathic. They're not angelic. They're, they're, they're from the devil. A final word. It is long past time to admit that psychiatry has failed us. In spite of its shaky foundation, psychiatry's diagnostic and statistics manual has literally infiltrated our entire society, our schools, governments, our court systems, the media, the military, basically stigmatizing our entire society. And at the bottom of this, money. The American Psychiatric Association rakes in 6.5 million a year, publishing the DSM, who diagnoses reaps 84 billion in annual psychiatric drug sales. All told, the psychiatric industry uses its mental disorders to amass a third of a trillion dollars a year, over 8 million times the 
income of the average American citizen. And all of this without a single person cured. Nobody's been cured. And the more med they put them on medication, they get worse. So they prescribe them more. Then they get even worse. Then they're obese. And then they get all suicidal and they hang themselves and shit. And then that's exactly what happens. And all of this, like I said, without nobody cured. Psychiatrists, diagnostics, and statistics manual is more than just a house of cards. It's a psychiatry's deadliest Sam. And it's people's lives that are at risk. It's my life, man. Just because the Bible says I'm God makes them all mad. That, that's not going to help them. In the end, it's not going to be good for them. So for them to continue to do this. So here's the actions to take. Order copies of this DVD and get it out to the doctors, mom and dad, healthcare and insurance professionals, concerned lawyers and judges, local community groups and or policy makers as well as friends and families and associates to educate them about psychiatry's diagnostic and statistical manual and the dangers of psychiatry diagnosis and treatment. They're basically kidnapping me. If you learn of any adverse reactions to a psychiatric, psychiatric drug, ensure this is reported to your national drug regulatory agency in the U.S. Go to, direct to www.fda.gov slash medwatch, period. Similar reporting systems exist in other countries, www.mhra.gov gov.uk slash safety information slash reporting safety problems www.tga.gov period au slash safety slash problem period htm comma or visit cchr.org encourage civil suits for the recover of damages for losses suffered at the hands of the psychiatrists and psychologists. So we're going to be suing this doctor and, and all of the people involved who are filing a lawsuit immediately. File complaints with the regulatory agencies such as medical and psychological psychologist boards that can investigate and revoke a mental health practitioner's license. We want to revoke Dr. Berg's license to practice medicine. We're going to take her license away. So, so and, and to revoke that her mental health practitioner's license to practice in cases of negligence and malpractice or abuse like they're doing to me today. So we're going to go to, we're going to file a lawsuit. We are doing this, Heidi. And Edgar, you have shitloads of money. You're rich. We are doing this. Okay. Number five, support legislation that outlaws or restricts cohorts psychiatric practices, patient and child drugging and other harmful treatments. Write and speak with your local, state or federal representatives. Encourage schools to prohibit mental health screening and psychosuric drug use in children and teens. Email contact at cchr.org for further information about policy that could assist school personnel. Studies show that undiagnosed, undiagnosed and untreated physical conditions can manifest as so-called psychiatric conditions, like they stuck my pubic bone into my guts and because I have pains and I get angry sometimes because it hurts, then they try to say that I, I, I'm mentally ill because of that when I'm not. If you or anyone you know is experiencing mental disturbances, ensure a full searching and a non-psychiatrical medical examination is conducted. And remember, non-psychiatric remedies do exist and they do work. I take CBD oil and THC from, from indica plants, right? Rowana, I'm allowed, like, I'm allowed to smoke marijuana, right? I'm allowed to use, I don't smoke, I use oils and this is why I'm healthy. Okay, mental health practitioners do not only abuse people with psychotropic drugs. If you know of any psychiatrist or psychologist who has committed a sexual assault, malpractice, fraud, or any other abuse or crime, report this to the police immediately. 
that. Report this to the police immediately, Dr. Sam. Report this. I won at Alberta Hospital, no matter whether under James Ian Warbisky's name, I won. They're not allowed to give me needles. They had to decertify me. The doctor out there let me go. So you have to report this to the police immediately. Okay. Now take action towards protecting yourself against forced psychotropic drugging or other damaging psychiatric treatment or inventions. Visit cchr.org or email contact a cchr.org for a copy of a psychiatric living will that requests that other people respect your desire not to undergo psychiatric treatment should you ever be deemed incompetent like they're trying to do now filling out a form 11 get this signed and provide a copy to a attorney or a trusted family member so i'm going to be filling out a living will today uh, for a psychiatric okay the CCHR was co-founded in 1969 by the Church of Scientology and Dr. Thomas Saz, Professor of Psychiatry Emeritus, State University of New York Health Science Center in Syracuse to investigate and expose psychiatric violations of human rights. CCHR has hundreds of chapters in 39 countries and its board of advisors includes doctors, lawyers, educators, artists, business professionals, and civil and human rights representatives. The CCHR has inspired and contributed to many hundreds of reforms by testifying before legislative hearings and conducting public hearings into psychiatric abuse by working with the media, law enforcement, and public officials in the world over. So basically, this is what I'm telling you. So you think psychiatry has nothing to do with you? Heidi, Omen, Opa, and Dr. Singh, and stuff, think again. This riv riveting presentation has two years in the making, lays bare the destruction wrought by psychiatrists upon every sector of our society. Graphic footage from archival and current films depicting psychiatrists in action, eye-opening interviews with medical experts, and moving accounts from victims and their families make this the most complete and devastating documentary of the psychiatrist's abuse ever produced. We think that you have the right to know the cold hard facts about psychiatry, Dr. Singh and the police and Heidi and my parents, its practitioners and the threat they pose to our children. Psychotropic drugs, it's the story of big money drugs that fuel 330 billion in the psychiatry industry without a single cure. They have no single cure ever for mental illness. The cost in human terms is even greater. These drugs now kill an estimated that they now kill an estimated 42,000 people every year, and the death count keeps rising, containing more than 175 interviews with lawyers, mental health experts, the families of victims, and the survivors themselves. This riveting documentary rips the mask off psychiatry, drugging, and exposes a brutal but well-entrenched money-making machine. And this is the... This is the movie right here, Psychiatry. It's called Psychiatry, an Industry of Death. And this is the one, Psychiatry's Deadliest Sham. And this is the book. It's called the Diagnostic and Statistic Manual, Psychiatry's Deadliest Sham. So I want the police to immediately act. I want you to arrest, if you can arrest, I want you to arrest Dr. Berg for kidnapping me, for violating my charter rights and for failing to provide the necessities of life immediately, immediately, Dr. Singh. And if I'm going to be here, I don't want to be in this hospital. I want to, if they're going to, they need to let me go immediately. There's no transfer to another hospital. And if they're not going to let me go, then I'm going to want to have a, tra uh, a transfer to a hospital that's going to listen to me and that will let me go. The Alberta hospital let me go. You helped me, Dr. Singh, before. So this needs to be addressed immediately. Okay? So I, I love you all. And Heidi, what the hell is wrong with you? Now they're trying to get somebody to be my caregiver. Heidi, you're bossier than hell. You're no, you're not, you're not even, you can't even take care of you. You're just all over the place, you know. So I, uh, you know, you know, 
you know where you are and stuff and 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 not and, and well what you're doing it makes no sense you lied to me i didn't lie to you you know how you lied to me you said i don't want to talk about god at all to james and i know that but yet now you're saying that you love god and that that, that you go to church every sunday and that that james you know where not god you're right he's not god he's actually the devil jehovah satan He's actually Jehovah Satan, and he's impersonating me. I, I don't know where he is, and that's a fact. So this is true. What I'm telling you is 100% true. I am the movie. I'm going to be playing this movie during this. I'm going to be one. We're going to be listening to this movie, and they have no right to do what they they're doing. And I don't know why Doctor Berg's doing this. I love love the doctor dearly. I love her, but. Her life is in jeopardy. I'm scared because the Bible says I am God. And there's people out there that her life is in danger. I'm worried about her. I don't want anything to happen. But there's people that know I'm in here. And they're, you know, somebody might try to hurt her. I don't know. I'm not telling anybody to do anything to anybody. I'm not telling anybody to harm anybody. But I'm worried about her. And so now the police. Now you know this. I have an apartment, you see that I'm clean, you saw my place was well, now you people need to act. She's either letting me go today or you arrest her for kidnapping me. That's really simple. She's breaking the law, you have tools. Same as the, the uh, Jason above me that lives upstairs, he's not supposed to be in there, so you just go in there and you arrest him for trespassing. Very simple. All right? Okay, you guys have a good day. Thank you.